Hey, what's up? My name's Carl and welcome to the Droid Goblin, your source for anything Android. News, reviews, articles, videos, confectionery. Wait, what? Yes, the channel has just launched and we're excited as hell. Now to kick things off, I'm gonna be taking a look at Adobe's Lightroom. Yes, the software giant has gone more mobile. Lightroom was launched for Android this last week and well, they've done things right and they've done things wrong. Right off the starting block, you will need an Adobe ID to get into the app and yes, you will need a Creative Cloud subscription to keep the app running after the 30 day trial period. The whole subscription service thing bugs me a lot. I don't really like it, but more on that later. Let's go find out what makes this app tick and stick around to find out what I think the best feature of Lightroom is. Alrighty then, when you've downloaded, installed and launched the app, you're prompted to create or log in with your Adobe ID. It just takes a few seconds to get it set up. Once done, if you aren't a Creative Cloud subscriber, you're allowed to start the 30 day trial. This to me is the first thing that they've done wrong. If the app is free, keep it free. If anything, charge to import filters from other apps or charge a once off fee for the app. It just seems like Adobe are trying to be greedy here and app piggybacking off a subscription service is just lazy. Anywho, fast forwarding, you're greeted with a prompt telling you that you can automatically import your photos to the Lightroom collections folder, which is handy. When you finally get into the app, you can see a collection has already been set up for you and imported your photos. When browsing your photos, you have a nice way of viewing any metadata that is attached to each file, the two finger tap. Doing so will cycle you through various information displays. You can change them on the fly depending on your needs at the time. When you select an image to edit, you get the same tap system to view more metadata, as well as a histogram of the photo. When you have selected the image you want to edit and gone into the editor, you can see three main settings menus at the bottom. The one on the left is to edit the raw settings of the image, like the exposure, white balance, contrast, and so on. The middle one is to get a creative look for your image. Here you can change things like colored filters, black and white filters, and the different effects. The last one on the right is to set up the composition of the image, mainly by adjusting the crop. You can select a preset or define your own crop. The menus are simple enough to get into when doing heavy editing and grouped effectively enough so that screen real estate is saved. I would love to have seen the ability to import filters from other apps like ViscoCam, Instagram, and so on. Maybe in a future update. Once your masterpiece is done, you can now share it with the world, or just yourself. You can save a copy directly into your gallery or share it using one of the various apps installed on your device. The other great thing is that you can also copy, move or remove it from your collections folder with the idea that you can then later sync it to your desktop version of Lightroom, if you do have one. Sweet, so there we have it, pretty cool all round. Adobe have done a great job with this app. It makes a nice addition to those existing CC subscribers, but if you're coming into it cold, mm, not so much because of the whole subscription thing, if that's not your deal. The feature I like a lot is the multi-finger touch system, which will allow you to quickly compare your edits to the original image. It's very fast, very simple, and very useful. I like it a lot. But that's all we have time for. Thanks very much for watching today, guys. Feel free to like, comment, share, and sub. My name's Cole. I'll see you on the next one.